Do you love a good story? If you do, check out Stories of Your and Yours. I'm Sean Ennis, and each week on Stories of Your and Yours, I narrate a classic short story, adding music and sound effects to bring those stories new life. The back catalog features stories by the likes of Edgar Allan Poe, Kurt Vonnegut, Rudyard Kipling, Mark Twain, Ray Bradbury, and many more. And in addition to classic short stories, I feature original stories by you, the listener. So if you do love a good story, give stories of your, that's Y-O-R-E, and yours, that's Y-O-U-R-S, a listen today. And visit the show at SYY Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to submit your own stories, requests for classic short stories, or just to say hi. That's stories of your and yours, available wherever you get your podcasts. Ghost in the Valley podcast. Today we have Jason Horton. He is the co-host of Ghost Town Pod, which is a podcast he co-hosts with Rebecca Lieb. And he also has another podcast called Strange Year. And I will put links to both those podcasts in the show notes, along with his new book, Abandoned and Historic Los Angeles, Neon and Beyond. That link will also be in the show notes. Jason is a New Yorker. He moved to Los Angeles and has been there for the past 15 years. And Los Angeles is truly his home now. Jason Horton, he is a writer, comedian, as seen on Comedy Central, True TV, the film The Thinning, New World Order, and Nat Geo's Brain Games. Jason, he is obsessed with filming locations, historical landmarks, abandoned places, and of course, Los Angeles. Okay, I'm excited today to have Jason on the show. He is the host of Ghost Town Pod. Yeah, I would say it's it's Ghost Town Pod pretty much everywhere, and our website is just ghosttownpod.com. And your podcast is basically on uh, true crime and paranormal? And- yeah, it's 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 a bit of a mix. When it started, it was kind of one thing, but, you know, like a lot of, you don't know what it's really going to be until you do it, and it's kind of evolved. Uh, it's obviously a, a lot of true crime, which does very well, uh, paranormal uh, a lot of weird history, which is probably my favorite thing, like the strange things that happen in history that you may or may not know. And then uh, like abandoned and haunted and just strange places. So it was kind of location based ish. And it still is sort of, but then it's kind of just evolved because we do two episodes a week and we have for over two years. So it, it, you need to kind of open up the, the world a little bit, uh, you know, under the umbrella of ghost town, I guess is the best way to describe it. Cause I put a podcast out of like every other week and I was looking at your, uh, your episodes, your past episodes. I'm like, man, you kicking my ass on these, <laughs> on these episodes on there. I think it's, uh, I, I kind of also do it like fast and loose because I also, well, I edit, all of them and kind of produce them all and i'm not great at it although it seems to come out fine but there's we don't have a lot of bells and whistles and we also don't do or we've done very little when it comes to having a a, like another third person on so that takes out a lot of production and 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 things like that so we have it a little bit a little bit easier uh on that end because it's just it's just myself and rebecca co-host and so we only have us to contend with in our levels and such. Now you and Rebecca, you're just you're just friends. We've known each other for well over ten years from the the comedy scene, and we've written together. We've had some sold some pilots and scripts, and then 
we've both done podcasts previous and she's somebody who has given haunted tours around Los Angeles. She knows a lot about Los Angeles history and she reads tarot cards. And I have an interest in more historic and weird history and like a love of an abandoned mall or something like that. So we kind of put those two things together and took whatever we learned from doing podcasts previously which have had some success and then kind of reverse engineered it where we're like, well, what, what can we do authentically and be enthusiastic about that also could in theory do well? Cause you know, you put a podcast that are hard, there's a lot of great podcasts out there that no one ever hears. And uh, there's, you know, the top 1% and then there's the rest of us. So I kind of went into it. Uh, I have like a marketing background. So I was like, how do we go into this, you know, with our best foot forward and then um, out from that, came ghost town and and uh it's it had a really it's been going pretty great ever since you know it's ups and downs but uh so far so good yeah because the way you come off i was when i first started listening to your podcast i'm like you almost sound like you're married (laughs) i mean yeah we have the relationship helps i think you know with that's something that you can't manufacture you can't uh, you know, you could be two really great actors, but I think there's something about having a rapport and kind of knowing each other's sensibilities. And plus we've done a lot of, um, you know, backgrounds in improv comedy. So we performed on stage for like 15 years and, and, and other various things. And, you know, I, I had made a career on YouTube and, and such. So it's, it's very easy for us. The, the hard part isn't us being ourselves and, and, and having that chemistry, you know, the, the tough part is, you know, going out and doing the research and then, um, you know, worrying about sound and uh, echo and, 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 and all that kind of the technical stuff is where we really have problems. And of course, you know, getting people to listen is, is, is always an uphill battle. Exactly. I mean, are you both from the uh, Los Angeles area? We are. Yeah. I mean, not originally, but we both, uh, we both lived here for, for quite a while. And I think it helps that we have a love of Los Angeles like a real, you know, where I know a lot of people are like, oh, Los Angeles is just like fake and Hollywood, but there's so much great culture. And, you know, with, with haunted stuff and with crime, I mean, what better place than, than you know, the greater Los Angeles area to talk about that? I mean, it's it's kind of a, it's, it's like a rife with like a lot of really great stuff. So it kind of works in our favor, even though we don't always talk about Los Angeles. You know, we've done, you know, some live shows, and of course we make it kind of L.A.-centric, and uh, we just love talking about it, so I think that really comes through, and I think that's, you know, anyone could talk about what we talk, what we talk about, it's, that's easy, but it's like, you know, it's having that enthusiasm and kind of connecting with people, and I think that's what works over, you know, you dotting all the T, you know, crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's and such, at least that's what I found in my experience. Love the concept you guys got working, comes off really, uh, really well. It's very, com- you know, I think a lot of people say they feel like they're just in a conversation with us because, and we've always said, dude, like, I wouldn't base your college thesis on our information. Like, we're not the best at, you know, being very kind of scientific with our flow and information and chronology, but it's having this discussion, something that maybe I've never heard of or maybe something she's never heard of, and we kind of get into that with giving some information and some levity because we come from a comedy background, so it's not all gloom and doom, which is fine. I mean, there's podcast, there are tons of podcasts great with that, but we're not every every moment is so – just try to find a little bit of levity in, in the darkness sometimes, you know, not, not all the time, but um, we, try to, we try to find that balance. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't based on get a lot of feedback and it's not all good. Skinwalker Ranch. We did, yeah, we did one on Skinwalker Ranch, which I found. You know, it, it's that thing where sometimes I feel like we do, like a little secret, feel like we do a lot of too much true crime in a row. I was like, well, let's switch it up to something paranormal. And I try to find some balance, and I felt like Skinwalker Ranch was a really – it's almost I, I mean I think I may have called it like almost like a greatest hits of events in one place. Uh that's kind of what I remember uh kind of remember when we were talking about it. So much has allegedly happened there. Yeah, you know cuz I didn't I never heard of Skinwalker Ranch until I did like a, a an episode a few a, well, a couple of months ago it was on the the updated UFO files released recently released. Uh, off that episode I got a phone call from uh I think it's F eighteen, and he uh, was commenting on the uh, the episode. I thought that was pretty cool, you know, you know, he's, yeah. and he was involved in a dogfight with the with the UFO. 
you know, and he didn't want his name used. Sure, sure. Any of that. He didn't want recorded either. He just, but he, he, I could share his info. Right. That's fair. Actually, I hung up on him twice because, you know, you get a phone call and it says uh, United States. Yeah. So, so I just hung up. I didn't, you know, I get tons of those. And finally, the third time, I, I for some reason, I, I answered it and he said, don't hang up, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, or listen to your episode. And, you know, so I'd never heard of Skinwalker. He was talking about Skinwalker Ridge. You know, he's looking back on it now that it was just playing with him. I thought it was a very interesting conversation. So getting back to the uh, the Skinwalker Ranch, then I found out that there was a, a series on the History Channel. Yes. So I watched that, and I was like, that was very interesting. You know, but of course, they have to add some Hollywood to it to sell the next season, you know. Of course, yeah. It's a, interesting because they seem to really have... Uh... They've really made a thing out of it with, uh, you know, the way they've set it up and almost like merchandising what it is. So they've really leaned into it from what I can see. You guys did a really good job on that one. There wasn't really much more I could add to that, but you guys put into it, you know. And I I sure hope they don't think I'm copying off their... No. Oh, I mean, we've done so many that other people have done that uh, I think it's, you know, like I was saying, I think... I think there's room where some things, maybe like an interview with a celebrity, uh, you know, a standard interview with a celebrity. Do you need really more than one? Probably not because they ask and answer all the same things. But when it comes to you know something like this, I think people are open to consume a couple of different points of view or maybe they forgot about it. Oh, yeah, that, you know, I remember listening to that. You know, this this newer episode on it, maybe, you know, there's a, a fresher, newer take. Like, you know, we talked about the UFOs and uh, was it the Navy uh, you know, we were just we were talking about that, the, the right. sightings or whatever. Mm-hmm. Maybe that adds a new dimension to things. But I think that, I think there's room for, uh, at least I believe there's room for, there's room for all of us to do a skinwalker ranch. Well, that's what I always thought too. You know, I'm yeah, never out there. Here. I'm never out there competing against somebody else. I'm out there putting out my thing, and and no. I'm, I'm always supporting other podcasters. You know, I guess I've come across a few that you know it's like uh, they're the only one you know what i'm saying i've always believed in collaboration i come from the world of youtube and that's all we did is we all worked together we shared each other's thing and that's how you that's how you grow not by you know being an island uh and, and you know, there's a limit to how much you can maybe do you know but for the most part we try to you know promote other people they promote us and and so forth and so on i think that's the it doesn't hurt it, it's never hurt me to promote somebody else it's never taken away from at least that's how i think about it i never realized what a a wide field that the the paranormal is goes to orbs to exorcisms the ufos bigfoot i mean there's tons and tons of unexplained activity yeah yeah there's no end in sight when when it comes to talking about that there's really no real there's no limit and even with your podcast and mine you know it's almost basically ghost town where your ghost town could be anywhere yeah and ghosts in the valley could be anywhere. Because when I started out, my valley would be Ohio. After doing this podcast for over a year, I'm, the valley is the is the, the world. I mean, if yeah. I talk if I talk to somebody from Australia to England to California to New York, I mean the stories are about all the same. So when I hear the valley, I, I when I hear it, like the valley, we living in Los Angeles. We think about the the San Fernando Valley, you <laughs> yeah. know, like the that's so when I, I was like, I, I knew it wasn't, but I was like, I'm going to check again. I was like, no, it's not. It's not. I would know if it was that that particular valley. Plus, you know, I don't know how much you could possibly do about the San Fernando Valley. Or that was just the name. But that's the first thing I think of uh, when I think of the valley. I'll be right back with the rest of my conversation with Jason Horton, host of Ghost Town Pod. I'm Kayla Knight, the host of Get Grim, a weekly podcast for the miniature folklorist or teller of tales in your life. Each week, I adventure to adapt several tales around a central theme and share them with my audience, along with my own commentary and background on each story. New episodes are released every Saturday, and I can be found on Apple iTunes or on your favorite podcast app. A lot of the episodes we've done have been places that we've gone to or experienced or, you know, our our accounts are coming from those places. And that's maybe in one of the ways that, you know, 
we differ from maybe from some other people is that some of the episodes that we talk about is not just coming from, oh, we looked up, we did some research and here's our opinion. It's like, oh, here's my experience, like growing, you know, if it's New York City or someplace in Europe, uh, you know, we, we kind of take it from our, our experience being there or experiencing it and incorporate that. And I think for some episodes, it gives it a little a little something different, although other tons of other people do that too, and I don't know if it makes it any better or worse, but um, yeah, and you know, you want to go to all these places. The first thing you think of is, like, oh, I, want, I want to be there so bad. <laughs> right. You know, I did one, uh, well, the last one I, th- I think was uh, Rolling Hills Asylum, and that's in. Uh, oh, yeah. is that in Ohio? That's in New York. And oh, wait, you know, you just said that you didn't, have, you said that was in, uh, is it Long Island? East Bethany, New York. Okay, yeah, I saw it on your thing. That's why, I th- and I, I thought, I thought, oh, I got to go there. You know, after seeing, you know, reading that, I'm well, I'm only like about six hours away. So you're in? Uh... I'm about seventy miles south east of Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, and I believe Ohio just has some really great ones. I did an interview with uh, paranormal investigators out of Oklahoma, and uh, the one had said to me, she, you know, she can't wait to come to Ohio. We, you know, I'll show her around to a few places. You know. I said, well, we've got, there's tons of them. There's so many to go to. Oh, I know. It's, yeah, you can't get enough of it. Yeah, getting back to the uh, Berkshire UFOs, how did you come across that? I mean, I just, uh, I, you know, even when I was younger, I didn't, I was obviously familiar with Unsolved Mysteries, like, culturally, and maybe caught some episodes, but then I think when it came on, I was like, all right, I'm, you know, I'm definitely looking into this. I'm curious what, what's, you know, with the, you know, with a podcast thing and, and true crime and documentary, how much it's it's how popular it's become probably since the original Unsolved Mysteries. I was like, well, I'd love to see how they're kind of doing their kind of modern take still while still, while still keeping the Unsolved Mysteries kind of brand there. And so I was just watching, you know, I watched all the episodes we did. You know, we covered three out of them, um, just, you know, kind of picked three that resonated with us. And it's interesting that the the Berkshire's UFO uh, episode is the really the only one it's the only one that's not crime based and which i think is great because i think it breaks up the the kind of theme but it also is strange that it's the only one so it's kind of a lot of uh, a lot of you know kind of tragedy and tragedy and then you have this one that almost is quirky in comparison i guess or you know uh and i I found that like an interesting thing that they did that five out of six was you know about loss and then then you have this uh interesting one that's just really interesting that really stood out yeah i thought that was kind of uh different myself you know because they're known for the uh mysteries that crime and i thought that was strange on their part but i would like i loved it (laughs) you know yeah well it was was a nice I mean, I don't listen. It's not to, you know, I don't want to be disparaging and, and make light of anything, but it is a bit of at least a um, cons- when you're consuming a little bit of a palate cleanser, a, a little bit in the show, depending on w- what order you watch the episodes in, um, which I thought was, and I'd love to see. I would love to see more. Yeah, I want. It's. I think it was also that the need of watching something new, <laughs> you know, just uh, kind of just being inside, and and so I jumped on it and. When those six were done, I swore there were two more, and I was so upset when they were done. I was like, now what? But that, you know, couldn't stop talking about it. And, of course, you know, the conversations on Reddit and then uh, Netflix on Reddit, like, you know, uh, specifically on Reddit did a, um, uh, like, an evidence uh, file on all the episodes. So it's, like, supplementary evidence and video and, and, and photos, which I thought was really great of Netflix to do and get kind of really involved. Especially the Reddit community where a lot of information is happening and people are talking, so... I just you'll go run on Reddit, and I thought that was I thought that was really great of them to do. But um, yeah, I would definitely want. I mean, the other five are uh, definitely different. Um, but uh, yeah, the, this Berkshire's UFO one is just so compelling. The people are so compelling and interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I talked to I mean Tom uh, Reed actually. You know, because we put our episodes on YouTube. And it's for the most part, it, you know, ninety percent of the time it's just the audio and, and and a photo, just to have it there in case people find it on YouTube. But he found it, uh, Tom Reed, from that episode and commented on it. And then uh, I gave him my email and he sent some, you know, I was like, if there's anything else you want me to add to it, you, you know? And so I just added some more information about, you know, the, the park and, um, you know, the, the, the kind of 
as far as the, what the, the town is concerned and and some uh, great supplemental information, I thought that was great that he's – we've had people from – that you know, we've talked about episodes reach out to us, but um, not always on – it's not always good um, or bad. It's just – but this one was more kind of interesting, and I was like, yeah, I would, I'm happy to – uh, share anything you want me to share since we're, we're talking about you and I believe that's only fair and it's not for me to get yeah, I would never twist it around and it's not really for me to like change my point of view either but it's like I want to be respectful and present um, information especially if it you know if it helps you and I'm talking about you it's it's a very least I can do you know but so I uh, did talk to a couple uh, people from the Netflix production team oh great and that was really interesting because they're they're planning on doing uh, I, what I understand from him, from talking to them, was two or three more uh, seasons. So of the new unsolved mysteries. Yeah, I hope so. Somebody told me, and I, I don't know how true this is, but that there is an actual another six that are going to be released. So there was like a, it, you know, there's kind of like a, a back six or whatever it's called. So they released six, but there's supposedly six more. Maybe they split the seasons or something. I don't know how true that is. It's what somebody told me. So yeah, he told me the same thing. Remember. Right? He said that they had. Uh, some in the bank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Maybe you don't want to put it out all at once and, and, you know, kind of see how things go and give people, you know, make them, uh, you know, make them hungry for it. But like uh, Tom uh, Warner was saying, you know, this happened when he was small, you know, and finally, you know, he can come around and tell the story. Yeah. You're always going to be ridiculed. There's always going to be people out there to say you're a kook or a nut or. I still get that this day. I mean, you know what kind of podcast you got going on? No, and I would never, you know, even though I'm, you know, I could be a bit of a, a skeptic, I, I never, I'm always open to hear things, and I would never want people to, because I still find things so interesting, so I would never want to do anything to stifle people from doing that, because it, if, if, it, if other people enjoy it, even if I don't enjoy something, other people do for the, you know, the you know, most part, like, I don't want to stand in the way of that. So, yeah, I just, I really don't get it. But, it, you know, that episode is one, in fact, my wife and I really got into it about that one out of all the episodes. I mean, we were like, because I was a little bit more of the side of the skeptic and she was a, a little bit less, although we agreed and disagreed on stuff. So that episode was very polarizing in this household. Um, and when it's all said and done, I mean, everything that you look at from the Project Blue Book or most of them are all, you don't hear anything. There's no sound from this vehicle. Sure. And how does some, something that happened in 1952, 1966, 1994, 1969. So, you know, all these had the most the same similarity, you know, you know, if these things are traveling 6,000 miles an hour and down to 35 and 6,000 miles an hour, and it was playing with them also back then. Mm, right. It, yeah, it, no, it is. Some of the stuff's really, really compelling, i got to admit. Uh, yeah, so I was just curious if, if you had another episode coming up on that, like a follow-up for Tom Reed, especially with the park, with the uh, monument. They didn't touch, on, touch that on the uh, on the Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah, you know, if, if you want, you know what I'll do is I will, um, you know, I, I kind of, uh, on the tail end of the episode, that we did one on the uh, there's, uh, one of the other episodes on Unsolved Mysteries, uh, Patrice Anders episode. Uh, the tail end of that, we uh, discussed that. I kind of just kind of relayed um, that and 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 you know put that out there since you know it wasn't necessarily a UFO episode, but it's still an Unsolved Mysteries episode. So I feel like it still kind of captured the same people, but uh, further legitimize um, the event. Well, I thought that that was. Well, I was just going to say that you know it seems to me the smart side would be since you, what this uh, uh, person from Netflix is telling me on Unsolved Mysteries was that that episode was the most watched episode on Unsolved Mysteries. So if it's that popular, and and a person I talked to today, matter of fact, she lives in uh, England, so she said she just got done watching the series herself. You know, so if it's all around the world watching that episode, don't you think it's going to bring in tons of tourism? People need to eat and, and go to hotels and, and you know, uh, you know, spend money and, 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 you know, you figured you would – you would want that. Um, at least that's what I would. I would think. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's interesting. So, where can we reach you at on Ghost Town Pod? Uh, yeah, you you could find uh, the website is ghosttownpod.com dot com, and you can find Ghost Town wherever you get podcasts. And I have a a book coming out. 
It is called Abandoned and Historic Los Angeles, Neon and Beyond. And you can find it on Amazon, Walmart, Barnes & Noble, wherever. It'll be out the, at the end of September. And uh, it's about – it's like a coffee table book about Los Angeles, but kind of the gritty side. So it's a lot of photos and essays from different musicians and artists and actors. So one of the, I don't know if you're familiar with the – just to be in the spirit of what we're talking about at the movie – um, paranormal activity. If you remember that movie, but the girl who, uh, the woman plays Katie, uh, who's the star of mo- most of the episodes. She's she's uh, included in the book, and um, she contributed something. So it's just celebrating the kind of historic and gritty side of Los Angeles, and it kind of came from doing Ghost Town. Um, the opportunity came from that, so it's a little bit adjacent to that. So if you want to uh, check that out when it's out. Um, it would, it's available officially on September 28th and it will, you know, I don't know what, what the climate will be in actual bookstores, uh, but it, technically it will be at Barnes and Noble and, uh, you know, Amazon, of course, and other Target and stuff like that. But, okay. Um, I'm definitely going to put that in the links in the show. So everybody wants to look at the bottom of the show notes, the uh, links to Jason's book and their podcast will all be in the links. All right. Thank you, Jason. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason, for the uh, the interview, and I will put all of your links in the show notes. And please check out Ghost Town Pod. I'm your host, Al Cooley, and I'll see you in two weeks with another great show on Ghosts in the Valley Podcast. <laughs>